Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome back to another 1400 scale diecast model aircraft review of this from NG Next Generation Models, the Boeing 787 9. Now, this is the second time that we've taken a look at the 787 in one of these model reviews, and it's, technically speaking, the fourth time that we've taken a look at an NG model on the channel, although it is really the third time that a video has been made specifically featuring an NG product. But here it is in 1 400 scale NG absolutely deliver with this 787 model. The last 787 that we took a look at on the channel was a Dash 10 variant, and that one was also in British Airways colors, but more importantly, that one was by Gemini Jets. The Dash 9 variant, it's the middle of the road as far as the 787 goes between the Dash 8 and the Dash 10. As that Dash number gets bigger, the aircraft also gets bigger, particularly in its maximum takeoff weight as well as in the fuselage length. And of course, the passenger or cargo capacity, whatever the case may be, gets proportionately larger as well. So, the 787-9, basically the middle of the road variant for the 787 series. But it is a wide-body twin-engine jet airliner, and of course it's designed for long-haul flying. And it is very much a stalwart and workhorse of the 21st century aviation industry. The 787, it first took to the skies commercially in 2011 with All Nippon Airways, and of course it continues to be in production as of this date in 2020, and more orders are still to be filled. So the aircraft still very much in production, and I totally expect this one will remain in the skies and in production for at least another decade, but we will see what happens with the aviation world as of late. NG models, though, in contrast to the Gemini Jets versions of the 787 that we've taken a look at, they do an absolutely amazing job on this one. And some details that we see on here, although different from the Gemini Jets version that we saw, they really distinguish NG from Gemini Jets in all of the right ways, as far as I'm concerned. It's slightly smaller than the 787-10 that we saw, but I think it's still just as nicely put together, and NG really... I've yet to see these guys go wrong in any regard with their 1-400 scale models. They're all absolutely wonderful in terms of their build quality, their overall detailing, their correctness in terms of the scale constraints, and the graphics as well. They look absolutely marvelous, and again, really no qualms so far from anything that I have seen about NG. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at this wonderful 1-400 scale rendition of the 787-9. Before we take a closer look at this wonderful 1-400 scale model, let's take a look at the box from whence it came. Coming in from screen right, here we go. Let's zoom out a little bit, get some more of it into frame. But here we go, Boeing 787-9, trademark. Yes, there we go. Boeing logo and graphics there, and then we have got ourselves a rendering of the aircraft front and center on the front panel of the box. Rendering is a little bit smaller than the model itself, but you can see that it has all of the same detailing as the model does. Really nice, everything visible there. Obviously landing gear retracted, but other than that, basically identical to what you see on the model itself. Here we go, the Dreamliner graphics right there, that's cool. And then NG, next generation model with the NG logo. Boeing, registration on this model, November 789er Echo X-Ray. And then we have got 787 Dreamliner, produced under license, Boeing, 787 Dreamliner, the distinctive Boeing logos, product markings, and trade dress are trademarks of the Boeing company. There we go, Boeing officially licensed product, plainly visible there. One 400 scale collectible models, die cast metal on the bottom right. Bottom panel of the box, there's a smaller rendering of the aircraft with a registration reiterated NG next generation model. Boeing logo, 787-9. Top panel of the box, very similar to the bottom panel, same detailing there. You can see that all looks well and good. One of the openable side panels in blue, all of that. There's an inventory number from the distributor. That's not just something from NG, but there's your item number, or at least an inventory number as far as the uh, retailer was concerned. Back panel of the box, there we go once again. And uh, as NG tend to do with their boxes, in terms of the cover art, trying to replicate the livery of the model as much as possible. There we go. Basically the same rendering that you had on the front panel. And then the back. Boeing trademark, trade and dress logos. Again, there's your item number 55021, your barcode, and then your warnings and recycles and things like that. Age is 14 plus. Contains small parts. Not suitable for children under 14 years. Product of China. 
and then we've got our Chinese text down there, most likely saying some variant of the same thing. Unlike the Gemini Jets boxes, there is no look inside tab in this general area, and there is no write-up of the aircraft in terms of its history and general specifications. However, we can fix that problem ourselves presently. Now, this is the second time on the channel that we have taken a look at the Boeing 787. We took a look a couple of months ago at the 787-10 in British Airways colors. This one, though, is the 787-9. It is the middle of the road of the current 787 lineup. There is the Dash 8, Dash 9, and Dash 10. We took a look at the Dash 10 before, and that is currently the largest variant of the 787. The Dash 8 is the smallest, and the Dash 9 is the middle of the road. You can call it the medium-sized variant of the 787. All three current variants of the 787, they do share plenty of common components, including a common wing structure. So through the Dash 8 through the Dash 10, the wing structure is exactly the same in terms of its composition, its highly composite structure, in terms of using carbon composites and fiberglass composites, things like that, to try and increase its rigidity while decreasing its weight. In other words, we are removing complexity and adding lightness to increase the range and fuel efficiency of these aircraft, but also we do have the interchangeability of some major components so that when Boeing get orders for a Dash 9 versus a Dash 8 versus a Dash 10, they don't have to do as much retooling on the production line to convert everything over from making one version of the aircraft versus another. Therefore, some of the specifications on the Dash 9 are going to be the same as we had on the Dash 10 from that review. However, the 787, as a monolith in its own right, all of the variants included herein, it is a wide-body commercial jet airliner twin-engine scheme, very conventional according to what we see nowadays in civil aviation architecture. It, of course, is from the United States, and it's produced by Boeing. The 787 made its first flight on December 15, 2009, and it made its service introduction with All Nippon Airways, the launch customer for the aircraft, on October 26, 2011, and it is, of course, currently in service, with the primary users being All Nippon Airways. Airways, Japan Airlines, American Airlines, and United Airlines. Of course, as we saw with our review of the Dash 10, British Airways, also a user of the 787 series. They have been produced since 2007, and they continue to be produced today in 2020. 981 of these have been built as of August 2020, and orders, of course, are continuing for all variants of the 787. According to Boeing's expenditure report from the 2011 fiscal year, the entire program cost at that point $32 billion. Of course, the program is not over. The overall development program for the 787, yes, it is over at this point because the aircraft is in production and in public service. However, the total program cost in terms of what they have spent to build these aircraft, that, of course, is not going to be something that we'll have seen for at least another decade or so, as I definitely predict that the 787, across all of its three current variants, will remain in production for quite some time to come. And we're talking about total orders, the 787-9. So far, there have been 882 orders placed for the 787-9 alone, with 549 of these having been delivered as of August 2020. Unfilled orders continue to stand at 333 as of August 2020. Therefore, the production life of this aircraft is going to continue for quite some time. The total orders for the entire 787 series as it stood in August 2020, 1,507. So, we've got ourselves a pretty successful airliner already just from a sales perspective. Definitely a good thing to see. In terms of overall specifications on the Dash 9 variant of the 787, we have a cockpit crew of two, as we had on the Dash 10, and as we do have on the Dash 8 as well. Of course, all the modern avionics and other technologies that are crammed into these aircraft nowadays, they obviate the need for a third flight deck crew member, usually a flight engineer or a navigator, even in the really old days. So only two people required to fly the aircraft, and of course, that would be a pilot and a first officer. Overall length on the Dash 9 variant is a little bit shorter than the Dash 10. The Dash 9, 206 feet, 1 inch long, that's 62.81 meters. The Dash 10 that we took a look at was exactly 224 feet long. So, a little bit shorter than the Dash 10, but it is still significantly longer than the Dash 8, which is 186 feet, 1 inch. So, 206 feet, 1 inch here on the Dash 9 in overall length. 
The overall wing area and overall wing configuration, identical across all three current variants of the 787. The wing has 4,058 square feet of wing area. The wing is swept back at a 9.59 degree aspect ratio with a 32.2 degree wing sweep. So 32.2 degrees swept back from the center line of the fuselage, the aspect ratio thereof, 9.59. Cool. Overall wing span, also identical from all three variants of the aircraft, 197 feet, 3 inches. Very interesting to see that they're able to stretch this airframe out while still using exactly the same wing across all three. We've got ourselves quite a big discrepancy in length between the Dash 8 and the Dash 10, the Dash 8 at 186 feet, the Dash 10 at 224 feet, but the wing is identical across all three. Very interesting. Overall height of the Dash 9 variant, 55 feet 10 inches from the bottom of the main gear to the top of the vertical stabilizer. The fuselage, aside from being stretched out a bit across all three variants as you go, be go between the 8 and the 10, it gets longer of course, but the overall fuselage dimensions in terms of width and height, they are identical across all three variants. The cabin width is exactly 18 feet across, the external width is 18 feet 11 inches, of course that extra 11 inches being taken up at least partially by insulation and external and internal structure uh, in, to make the shape of the fuselage and to contain the pressure vessel and all things like that. But 18 feet of cabin width and externally it's 11 inches wider because we've got ourselves the insulation and other ancillary structural components. Interior cabin height 19 feet 6 inches. So we've got a pretty wide and expansive fuselage there for your cabin area. Obviously that's going to increase passenger capacity. We've got ourselves a maximum takeoff weight on the Dash 9 and Dash 10 of 560,000 pounds. Our maximum payload is 116,000 pounds on the Dash 9, the operating empty weight being 284,000 pounds. Fuel capacity on the Dash 9, 33,384 U.S. gallons, that's 126,372 liters, or in weight we're talking 223,673 pounds, or 101,456 kilograms. These specs here are also identical across all three variants. The speed, the cruising speed of the 787 in all variants is Mach 0.85, that's 488 knots or 903 kilometers per hour. The maximum theoretical airspeed, though, that you could safely reach before you start running into structural problems, Mach 0.9, that's 516 knots or 956 kilometers per hour. But, of course, in normal service, they wouldn't get up to Mach 0.9. Overall range on the Dash 9, that's 7,635 nautical miles, or 14,140 kilometers. Maximum takeoff length, in other words, what's required at your operating weight in terms of general capacity, 9,300 feet of runway required, that's 2,800 meters. And our ceiling, in terms of being reasonably loaded up for flight, 43,100 feet. That's shared between the Dash 8 and Dash 9 variants. The Dash 10 has a slightly lower service ceiling of 41,100 feet, but 43,100 for the Dash 8 and the Dash 9. The engines available on all variants of the 787 are the General Electric GE NX-1Bs or the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000s. This aircraft here has the Trent 1000s on it, and they generate 71,000 pound-feet of thrust. That's 320 kilonewtons at sea level there about, of course, that can be multiplied by two because we have got two engines on this aircraft. And of course, given your atmospheric conditions and your height of the runway above sea level, things like that, the actual thrust output will vary day to day. Interesting. But we've got ourselves some very stout specifications here for a modern day civil jet. And of course, it does the job quite well as they already have sold quite a few of these with more still under construction. With our aircraft rotating once again, we can start to take a closer look at the details that NG have put together for us on this model. NG, they make really good models. In terms of the graphics detail that we see on them, as well as the just overall build quality, it's absolutely wonderful. This one is a 2019 release from NG, so it's not one of the very latest, but it certainly is quite representative of the current production standards that you'd expect to get from an NG product. And here in 1400 scale, a lot of the details are very small, just given the scale configuration and scale restrictions that you have if you're going to be respecting the proportions at this relatively small scale. But the details that are here are absolutely wonderful. 
Everything, of course, is very nicely rendered here graphics-wise and in terms of just the general build quality. You can see that we have a Boeing house livery on this aircraft, so we are missing some graphical details that you'd get from an airline livery. So in other words, we don't really have titles or anything like that on this one, but we do have nice Boeing branding across the bottom section of the forward fuselage, as you can see. We've got a nice cheat line that nicely bisects the livery between its lower and upper areas. That looks good, and I love the contrast between the blue and the white there, and the gray lines that continue to move up, sort of mirroring that cheat line in the forward section. You can see those lines in the rear section. They look good. All the graphics are nicely put together, I've got to say. Really, there's no distortion anywhere. Everything looks crisp and clean, and as we get closer in, you can start to see more of the details here on, and it absolutely looks great. I do like the cockpit windows, and uh, that's very similar to how we uh, remarked about them on the Gemini Jets version of the 787-10, but it looks really nice. The wings are very crisp and clean, and they uh, terminate in these very sharp wing tips. I like that a lot. The engine nacelles, there you can see the Rolls-Royce decal on the port engine nacelle here. It looks very, very good. Fan blade detail inside, you can see all of that. That looks wonderful. We'll take a closer look at those engines later on, but looks great. You can see the chevrons on the trailing edges of the nacelles looking awesome, absolutely awesome. The pylons to which the nacelles and thereby the engines are mounted looking good. Towards the tail section you can see our antennas in the tail, upward and lower. That looks good. Registration detail there on the back. Really, I don't have anything to fault so far on this model. It looks absolutely wonderful and uh, yeah, I mean really, it is a very nice one. I do have to say, so far, no complaints. There's the tail cone, auxiliary power unit exhaust back there. You can see the area where the horizontal stabilizer can trim. Looks really, really, really good. Uh, I saw this one. I wasn't intending to get this one, really, but uh, I saw it up on uh, one of the uh, distributors that I take a look at. I saw their website, and they had this one. It happened to be featured on the front page, so I uh, took a look at it, and they had plenty in stock, so I had to give this one an order because the 787 is a really interesting airplane to me, and NG, they do a great job on their models, although I don't have all that many of them. I'm starting to get more of these, and each one seems to get better than the last, so really, very, very pleased so far with the macrocosmic details on this aircraft. Looks absolutely marvelous. start to take a look at the port side here on the 787-9. We'll start to zoom in and see some closer details here. There we go on our nose section, looking really good. Initially, you can see that we have got our L1 and L2 doors visible here, as is the graphic 787-9. That looks good. Our nose gear door visible there, and we can see the left side of the cockpit windows, looking really nice. Also, you can see the two cheat lines, really. Obviously, you've got the main separating line between the dark blue and the white paint on the top section of the fuselage, but you can also see these gray lines, these pinstripe lines that are starting to go from the nose section, from the radar fairing, all the way rearward, and then they start to expand as we head rearward toward midship and then over the wing. Looking really good, and those gray lines continue into the blue section behind the wing, and then they terminate here in the tail right before the L4 door. Very, very cool. The L3 door there, it's uh, behind the wing from our angle right now, but it's all there, and it all looks good. Initially, uh, that was something that I didn't expect to see on this model. I just thought it would be white and blue, but no, it uh, has that dividing line with the pinstripes, and it looks really good. Also, you can see the landing gear here, the nose gear, and the main gear. They are plastic wheels wrapped in rubber tires. They all roll very freely. The main gear do not pivot, but they roll very nicely, and that's all well and good. You can also see up at the top side here, we have got our antenna visible there. That looks good, and really, it just looks absolutely fantastic. You can also see that you have got your windows here in the cabin. Now, obviously, this is really a test airplane, so this one wouldn't be carrying passengers as such. It would be loaded with uh, technicians on board and all sorts of equipment that those technicians would be monitoring. But uh, it does have a fully fitted passenger cabin, at least in terms of the windows here. You can see that we have got a red window shade in the uh, forwardmost port side window there. It's not an error on the model. That's uh, probably some instrumentation that's been mounted to the side of the aircraft there on the, uh, probably on the inside, 
probably to monitor either temperatures or, or the pressure differential or vibration, something through the aircraft structure that they want to measure via contact point on that window. But that is why that window is blocked out in a red window shade, at least what it looks like here. And then above that, you can see that you have all of these little triangular sections, and they go up through our forwardmost section. They terminate just beyond the uh, sixth window beyond the L2 door. I'm not entirely sure what those are. I mean, they're very small. They just look like these little chevron patterns. I don't know if that is external instrumentation fitted to the aircraft, because I haven't seen anything like that on the other 787 models that I have, but interesting to note, not entirely sure what they are. If you do know what they are, please feel free to let us know. Also, we have got ourselves our Boeing graphics, of course, and then we have got air data ports below, nose landing gear, looking good, and then our engine to sell here for the port engine. Looking nice. You can see some detailing there on the port engine nacelle. We've got a Rolls-Royce decal for the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000s that are fitted to this aircraft. Leading edge of the nacelle on the intake side, you can see that it is done in silver and it's very nicely done. And you can see the shut line between that silver ring around the intake and then the main body of the nacelle. That all looks good. And then toward the trailing edge of the nacelle, toward the exhaust side of the engine, you can see the chevron pattern there for our vortex generation to control some of the sound levels on the exhaust side of the engine. And then the exhaust cone there, looking good. Main gear is very nicely rendered, as we said. Main gear doors obviously open with the landing gear extended and the aircraft on the ground. And then moving toward the tail section, you can see here that we have got two antennas. We have got one upper and one lower in the aft section of the fuselage. That all looks well and good with no problems. Dreamliner graphics visible there, plain as day. L4 door, and then below that and slightly farther aft, you have got our registration, November 789 Echo X-Ray. Looks good. If we move up a little bit more, you'll be able to see our empennage area. There we go. Get our camera moving up a bit. There it is. Tripod got jammed for a moment. There it is, our empennage, our vertical stabilizer with the 787-9 graphic there. That looks good. And then, of course, we have got ourselves our horizontal stabilizer, leading edges of which are done in silver. That looks good. I think that's some sort of a metal coating uh, for the uh, de-icing system, as well as to try and stave off some erosion of the leading edge there. But looks good. Uh, do we have a shut line here on the tail? I think we do. Should be visible a little bit later on, but yeah, we do have a shut line there for our rudder control surface. That all looks well and good. No qualms about any of that. And our top side of the fuselage again, looking well and good with no problems. Focus going a little bit haywire here as we're a little bit high up. There we go. So far, so good. No qualms about this one at all from me. Coming in on the nose section of the 787-9, there we go. Then our focus for the nose cone area right now. There it is, there's your cockpit windows. They all look very nice, no problems with any of that. Looks good. You can see that we do have our landing gear doors for the nose gear, that all looks good. And you can also see the shut line there around the fairing that covers the radar array in the nose. That all looks very, very good. No distortion with our graphics there. It's just a very, very tight and small line, concentric line around the nose cone. And then you do have those perpendicular lines extending toward the nose tip. Looks good. You can also see how the cheat lines converge there at the nose tip. That all looks absolutely fine. Additionally, you can see right here on the model, you have got the emergency egress hatch there from the cockpit. Should the pilots need to be able to get out via escape rope, they can pop that hatch out and then climb out through a hole in the roof. That's all good. And then moving a rear is the wing root area where we do have our landing lights visible. That all looks good with no distortion. Talking about this point and this point on each side there. That all looks good. And then as we start to move a rears and outboard yet further, we can see that we have got ourselves our fan blade details. Now, that all looks really, really good. We talked about the fan blade details on the Gemini Jets versions of the Airbus A350 as well as the 787-10. However, here on the NG 787-9, they look just as good, if not even a little bit better, than they did on the Gemini Jets versions there. They look absolutely wonderful. The engines are passed through in terms of being able to see through the uh, fan blade matrix in there. 
if I put my finger behind, a little bit difficult to see here, but uh, you can see, just take a look in the upper left section of the left-hand engine on our perspective, really the right engine. See, if I move my finger behind the engine, some of those points of light are blocked out. So there you go, the engine is passed through and that looks really, really good. And of course, quite authentic because these engines would have a pretty high bypass ratio. Moving outboard, you can see that we have got ourselves our wing tips up there, raked relative to the fuselage. So some uplift dial then on the ground, probably a little bit too much uplift if we're talking about what the airplane would actually look like on the ground, but the wings would reach that relative angle of uplift once the aircraft is airborne due to the aerodynamic forces that are at play here. Moving rearward, setting our depth of focus for the vertical stabilizer. You can see the details starting to come into focus back there. That all looks good. If we uh, move up, a little bit more you can start to see more of that detail that looks very very nice I've got to say leading edges of the vertical and horizontal stabilizers look straight no problems there no chipping or paint loss or anything like that looking very very good from where I'm sitting awesome Take a look at the starboard side of the 787-10, there we go, moving toward the nose area again. Basically, the same details that you have on the port side, but uh, some more detail. We do have some hatches here in the lower section of the fuselage. In reality, I believe the cargo hatch would be here, but I don't think that's... Uh, no, nope, it is actually visible. We do have a little bit of a squared off section just below the O and the E in Boeing there. Looking good. And then, of course, we do have our R1 and R2 doors visible here. That same red window shade in the forwardmost window of the cabin here on the starboard side, same as it is on the port side. Very interesting. Also, more air data ports along the starboard side of the nose in the cockpit area. Looking good. And then as we start to move aft, you can see that we have that same antenna visible from the starboard side. And then moving toward the starboard wing and our starboard engine to sell basically the same details that you had on the port one but of course all mirrored by uh, 180 degrees. Coming across the wing tip there, there is your green strobe on the starboard wing tip. That all looks good, no problems with any of that. Marvelous. And then moving toward the tail section of the fuselage, there we go. Dream liner, plainly visible there, looking good. And then toward the tail section there, our registration visible once again, November 789er Echo X-Ray. Tail cone, APU exhaust right at the extreme rear section of the tail cone, and then our vertical and horizontal stabilizers. There we go with our lighting here. It's a little bit easier to see the shut line in our vertical stabilizer for the rudder control surface. Looks good. Looks really, really good. And you can see from the reflections that the graphics are all done very smoothly. No distortion anywhere. I just really like the contrast in the uh, paint colors on this model. Everything looks really, really good. There's no smudging anywhere in terms of the graphics, uh, nor is there any flaws in the paint application that I've been able to discern. Everything looks good. I also really appreciate the color gradient that you also get across this aircraft. Some of that is a little bit of a trick of the light, I believe, due to the, uh, the pinstriping, but you can see that the blue section of the fuselage, the lower section of the fuselage, it starts off darker and then it becomes a gradient toward the lighter color value as we get toward the aft section and then the uh, lightest part of that blue paint really is in the vertical stabilizer as you can see here looking really really good and again i don't have any qualms about it whatsoever it's absolutely wonderful ng they make really nice models and once again they have not disappointed Now taking a look at the rear of the 787-9, starting to zoom in, there we go, looking nice. There is our tail cone, and of course our APU exhaust visible right here, that looks good. That is done in silver, it is not just a continuation of the blue, a little bit difficult to see due to the reflectivity and our lighting angle here, but that is all done in silver, perhaps with uh, less direct light on it, you'll be able to see that contrast a little bit better. That looks good good though, but again, all done in silver. That's good. You can see the trailing edges of the horizontal stabilizers here looking good, as well as the trailing edge of our vertical stabilizer and where it interfaces with the rear section of the fuselage. Looking nice. We've got our main gear visible here. The shocks and struts to which they are mounted looks good. The aircraft is sitting straight and level on the ground, so no problems with that. 
And also here, you can see that we have the pass-through engine detail visible here on both sides. Setting the focus for the port engine here, again, move my finger in front of it, and you can see that the light value changes as my finger starts to obscure the uh, light coming through the front of the engine. That looks good, and again, that's demonstrating that these are pass-through engines. Looks absolutely fine. Moving outboard on the port side, you can see our wingtip. That's all well and good. No problems with any of that. Awesome. Terminating here. This very, very fine point. Looking very good. And then moving back toward the starboard side, there's your starboard engine. Again, it is a pass-through, and we can demonstrate it being a pass-through in the same manner. There you go. That is a pass-through, plain as day. Very, very good. And then, of course, we have got our starboard wingtip there. Absolutely fine. No problems whatsoever from the rear either. Moving up a bit more, you can see here at the top of the vertical stabilizer coming into view. That all looks good. No issues with that. Everything looks crisp and clean and straight. No problems, no distortion, no bending, no anything like that. No chipping along those very, very uh, thin leading and trailing surfaces. No problems whatsoever. Looks absolutely marvelous. No problems from me whatsoever. It's a fantastic model. Good job, NG. And now to close this out with some freehand shots, get some more views of details that perhaps we couldn't see from slightly longer range before. There is our port side forward area with our nose cone visible. We do have our cockpit windows and you can see that we have got windscreen wipers visible. That all looks very, very good and correct as well. Looking good. Pinstriping also visible going down to the nose. Wonderful stuff. There is our L1 door, and we've got our hardware on it for opening and closing the door, and of course for locking it. That's good. Nose landing gear with our fleet number on it. I believe that says 001. Very good. And then we have ourselves our cabin windows, our static ports and our air data ports visible. Some of them encircled, some of them just visible there on the lower side of the left nose, as you can see. Looking good. And then you can see these uh, details above the uh, nose, or above the passenger uh, windows, rather. Not sure what they are. I don't know if those are meant to be patterned after tail fins and uh, tail colors of airlines that have ordered the aircraft, or I'm not entirely sure what they are. Somebody, I'm sure, understands what those are and will be all too happy to correct me in my just blatant and wild speculative assumptions as to what they could be. So please do offer your correction and be as murderous as you want with uh, the tonality of your response as well. I just want to learn. I don't care if you're nice about it. And then of course we've got our L2 door with the hardware for opening it as well. Leading edge of the wing. There's your engine nacelle. That looks really, really nice. You can get a better view of the detailing visible there. Leading edge of the wing. Red strobe for the port wing. Coming over the top of the wing, there's our shut lines for our control surfaces, our slats, flaps, and spoilers, and our ailerons as well. Looks good. Starboard wing, same things visible. Looking wonderful, terminating out there in the wing tip area. Awesome. Fuel dump valve also visible there on the trailing edge outboard flap. Looking nice. And in a cell for our starboard engine with our little strike there with a winglet just for cleaning the airflow around the engine and then here we go fan blade detail inside looks absolutely marvelous i love that fan blade detail ng have done an absolutely resplendent job with that really great as a lot of uh, a lot of authenticity to just the visual space that the uh, engine area takes up and it uh, looks good looks like it's ready to go flying awesome Midships area, you can see that pinstriping as it starts to come in over the passenger windows. Dreamliner. And then your November 789er Echo X-ray registration, L4 door. Then moving up, there we go, 787-9, vertical stabilizer branding. And the stabilizer itself looks absolutely marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. No criticisms whatsoever about this one. It just looks really, really good, and uh, it, I don't have too many models in a house livery. So in other words, a house livery being the livery that the aircraft manufacturer paints on it uh, so that they can send the plane out and go testing with it. But uh, 
This one obviously is a house livery and it looks really, really good. I, some of the house liveries in uh, some years gone by have looked really ghastly in my opinion, but not this one. Looks really nice and uh, again, I think it's a great acquisition here in 1 400 scale. And of course, NG, I'm finding that you can't really go wrong with these guys. Absolutely wonderfully done. So there it was in 1 400 scale by NG, the Boeing 787-9. NG, they continue to be surprising for all the right reasons, to me at least. I find their build quality to be really, really good, in some ways superior even to Gemini Jets, but in all the ways that matter, they are just as good all around, I must say. This aircraft, it's absolutely wonderfully done. I really do think that the livery particularly, it highlights the natural contours in the overall design architecture of this aircraft. You've got the really thin wings that they terminate in very sharp points there at the wing tips. Everything just looks very sleek and modern and prim and proper for 21st century aviating. And of course, the reasoning for all of this is to try and get these planes to be lighter, to be faster, to be more fuel efficient so that you can increase your passenger capacity or increase your cargo capacity or increase your range or all of the above in some combination or another because efficiency is very much becoming the name of the game in civil aviation. You want to bring more people or more freight over more land area for less in terms of monetary cost but also in terms of fuel cost and your emission cost because Emissions, definitely one of the things that the aviation industry has been battling basically since it began, not necessarily only in the name of climate control, as it were, but we're also just trying to be more efficient because it just saves money and it really, in the end, will lower the cost of flying for everybody involved, be it the manufacturers or the airlines or just the common stakeholders such as people who buy tickets for flights around the world. So anything that we could do to make these planes more efficient is really only going to benefit all concerned parties. NG, though, doing an absolutely brilliant job on this 787-9. If you can find one, definitely I would highly recommend that you take a look at getting it for your 1400 scale collection because it absolutely just looks awesome. My favorite details on it, again, I am really an engine guy. I love the engine details, particularly the fan blade details here on these Rolls-Royce Trent 1000s, but everything else around the engine area looks good. The nacelles look great. The graphics on the nacelles are readable. If you could get in close enough to see them, the Rolls-Royce decal, at very least, definitely it is recognizable. Just overall, the proportions of everything, though, not just the engines, but across the entire aircraft, looks absolutely fine. The landing gear are great. They all roll very freely rubber tires in perfect round around those wheels everything looks good nothing's loose nothing's chipped nothing's crooked it's just an absolutely wonderful all-round model until next time though i do hope that you have all enjoyed this one ferrari bound 601 saying thank you for watching and of course we will see you soon